Hey, what's up guys? I hope you're all having a great summer so far. Uh, I got a few messages from guys just kind of asking if everything's all good. I haven't been posting a whole lot lately. Uh, a few reasons. Uh, some of you know I was on vacation for a couple weeks and also I'm working out of the office helping the supervisor right now. Things are just crazy busy. A lot of guys away on vacation and stuff. So I'm still taking calls, emergency calls after hours and a few during the day. We did manage to get a little bit of footage over the last couple weeks, but I just haven't had time to do any editing whatsoever. So right now I'm actually heading to a family barbecue very soon, but one of our guys needs a hand. We have uh, an underground URD box, a splice box for secondary connections that the cover is busted and the uh, the homeowner in the area was concerned because the kids were playing around it. So we're gonna go secure that down. Someone might have hit it with a right on lawnmower or something. There's supposed to be below soil. But we're gonna check that out. Yesterday, worked all day yesterday. It was crazy busy. We had a car accident first in the morning. The car went into a culvert, jumped through the air, and broke the pole like 20 feet off the ground. So we responded to that. And as soon as we responded, we ended up getting the pole on fire way in the other side of the town. So I looked after that situation, uh, shut the power off at the grounds of the lines. My my crew headed off to pole fire. We called in another crew as soon as that crew arrived. They had to bail for a tree that fell on the primary and knocked those wires down. That's it was just brother. crazy hectic. So we did get a little bit of footage yesterday while we were setting the pole. Towards the end of the day, guys that I called to help me with that pole Kind of one came back to give a hand then another next thing you know we had like four or five trucks there and it was it was a tricky pole the way it was broke with the corner and the takeoff and stuff but we ate that thing up fast boys get that pole on the ground all the wires transferred over with within about an hour and a half once everyone showed up and we had our permits to dig of course i'll get into that in another video anytime you dig you get a call all the utilities around to make sure there's no buried gas lines water lines sewer electrical lines etc other than that, last week while I was doing supervisor work, I had an electrician inquire about a pad mount, so we said. So I brought up the computer and punched in the address and I said, there's no pad mounts there, what are you talking about, kind of thing. An electrician that I know and trust pretty good. So I drove down to the site and we seen this big old rusted box. I wasn't entirely sure what was inside and it was just kind of mapped on, on, onto our line diagrams if it was secondary so i assumed at one point it was a trans closure uh trans closures have been obsolete for many years the last one i took apart was probably 15 16 years ago i found a trans closure at this spot but it's not on our line diagram it's not on our system and i'm pretty sure the transformers are actually not inside it it is still locked up and it still does have our company logos however on the steel encasing so I'm going to back it up a bit. A transclosure is a transformer enclosure. It was pretty much pole mounted transformers sitting on a concrete pad. So instead of a three phase pad mount, you'd have three pole transformers, much in the same as a transformer bank. And then it was encased in steel and locked up. So these guys were pretty dangerous. Not something you want to work on while they're energized. So what we've got, we've got this transformer bank right here behind me with a brand new set of wires. I say brand new, maybe 15 years old, hidden in the building. But the wires coming into the main are cloth wires, real old stuff, coming up and pull our newer ones. So what I'm thinking is going on is at some point they removed the pole mounted transformers from the transclosure and basically turned it into a splice box. So with these steel panels, you should be able to take this handle lift straight up and then the bottom would pull outwards as I put these panel doors off. I couldn't move that one and then I did see there's some self-tapping screws right here in the panel. This one doesn't appear to be screwed in at all, so we'll give this guy a try instead. All right, so that one lifted off quite easy. And uh, I had to shut my camera off for a minute, use both hands. So that's, that's exactly what it is. This is... Uh, all low voltage connections where it's inside this enclosure I wouldn't uh, 
I wouldn't bother working on that Energize. You're not gaining anything by that whatsoever. So what we'll do, it is exactly what we, we thought. This here, these are the wires coming off that transformer bank up there. And then those are all connected using hand pack connectors underneath those guards. Feeding that, looks like 500 MCM copper down into the building. So that's uh, three phase 12208. Got a red, blue, and a black hot, white for the neutral. And each one of those apartment units will grab the neutral wire and two of those three hots alternating to balance the load across those three phases. Customer wants to replace that cloth wire, the main feed going into the building. We'll have a crew come by here. We'll open the cutouts on the transformer bank and we'll do one of two things. We can have the customer trench right clear to the pole, run a whole brand new wire in, or we can put a splice box below grade in this general facility and connect them to these wires. These wires are still in good enough shape. I'm not too worried about reusing those guys. If this truly was still a transclosure, you can see how there's three doors. There'd be one pole mounted transformer sitting on the floor and be in behind each one of those access points. They would then have the primary coming out of that duct there. You can see it's the concrete was poured to have ducts on that side, but those were never used. And then the secondary would come off the secondary bushings of the transformer straight down into there. This this isn't a setup that would have had any cutouts or switches in it, just the transformers. The switches would have been feeding the cables up on the pole and they would have been fused accordingly. Definitely uh, definitely a scary setup. So at at this point where the customer is gonna be doing some work, we're not gonna we're not gonna be leaving this unit here. So I will show you guys this just as we put the door back on. If ever you do come across a trans closure. Basically the doors there's a good two inch rail there so you don't actually drop the steel inside. You line it up with the rails on either side and you simply grab your handle and lift straight up. That weighs a ton so we're going to do that with two hands in here in a minute. But there would also, a lot of these had a fiberglass firewall behind that that you could remove with a hot stick if required. There'd be fiberglass firewalls sometimes between the transformers, sometimes between the steel door and the transformer itself. Everyone was was different. So we're gonna lock this guy up for now. If I ever do come across a transclosure in the field that's still active or, or still has the transformers inside it, I'll definitely be sure to show that in a video. Pretty much wanna get that out of there and turn that into a subgrade URD box, a splice box for secondary connections. Other than that, guys, we're vacations done. But I'm heading off very soon to Milwaukee. Hopefully get some real cool footage of that. We're going to try to document everything throughout the trip. It's going to be a fast trip. We're going to fly in, go check out Milwaukee, like Milwaukee tools that we use for pretty much everything now at our company and at home. Total squirrel, but... I bought Milwaukee's air compressor, the tire inflator, and a bunch of their garden tools, whipper snipper, all that stuff. The stuff is amazing, guys. This is not sponsored in any way, shape, or form. But uh, yeah, I like their stuff. So thanks for everyone that shot a message out to check in. Yes, me and my family are safe from all that flooding that was in Nova Scotia. That was an absolute disaster. The, uh, the roads and highways and stuff that were washed out, a lot of my buddies went down there to respond to the outages and we're working out of boats, dumping lines and opening underground feeds and stuff. It was it was pretty wild. I don't have much for footage of that. All kinds of stuff online though, lots of, I don't wanna say great pictures. It was, it was an absolute disaster. It's gonna cost their community a ton of money to repair that infrastructure. But thanks for stopping in as always guys. We'll have some stuff up and running soon. Hopefully we'll get some more GoPro jobs of some stuff. A lot of viewers seem to like that. Some actual GoPro footage of the work up in the air. So let's hit the road and I'm gonna get a shot of that URD box once we get on site there. See you all soon.